My name is Corporal Andrew Tracy, and today we're going to be conducting a demo of the CT6 Free Fall Parachute. This parachute is used by light infantry battalions across the Canadian forces in all free fall parachute descents. Today, my packer is going to be Private Christine Waugh. So Private Waugh is going to begin her packing procedure by doing a full inspection of the pack tray and the harness. Once the inspection is completed, she's then going to do a six line check on the parachute. This is to ensure that none of the lines are tangled and the parachute will deploy properly. Upon completion of the six line check, she's then gonna call the rigger for the first rigger inspection. Go ahead. She can now proceed to the next packing phase. She places a weight on the risers and the suspension lines to ensure that all suspension lines are even when she pulls tension on the parachute. She's now stowing her brakes at 50%. This is to ensure that the canopy is going slower when it deploys. Once the brakes are stowed, she's now gonna begin stacking her canopy. While she's stacking the canopy, she's also inspecting it for any damage, rips, tears, or frays. There's seven cells and each cell is stacked one on top of the other. She's now gonna ensure that all seven nose cells are clear and not sucked inside the canopy. She's now going to fold the nose towards the center of the canopy, again to reduce pack volume. She's now going to repeat the same process with the tail of the canopy. Again, folding the tail towards the center of the canopy in order to reduce pack volume. She's now going to bring her slider to the top and place it properly. The slider is there to reduce the opening shock of the canopy and reduce the shock on the body of the jumper when the canopy deploys. The rigger's second inspection now, I'm going to ensure that her brakes are stowed properly. I'm then going to check that the slider is placed properly and that the canopy is stacked neatly and proper. Go ahead. She's now folding the canopy to the proper size to fit inside the deployment bag. She's now gonna close the deployment bag using the elastic stow bands and the suspension line stows to make locking stows. This is done in a controlled S-fold manner these stows are going to ensure that the canopy stays in the bag until the lines are fully extended. Once the four locking stows are complete, she's then going to continue stowing her lines again in an S-fold pattern, all the way to the risers. She's now ensuring that the bridle of the deployment bag is clear from any material inside the deployment bag. Once her suspension line stows are complete, she's going to call for the rigger to come to his third inspection. Go ahead. She's now going to place the parachute inside the pack tray and begin placing her risers down the sides of the pack tray. She's now closing the riser protector flaps. She's now going to fully place the parachute inside the pack tray. She's now going to close her side flaps and her bottom flap and lock them off with temporary pins. She's now going to neatly S-fold and stow the bridle of her main pilot chute and then place the pilot chute on top. The spring-loaded pilot chute is then compressed and placed underneath the bottom flap. She's then going to close the top flap around the pilot chute. The last flap to be closed is the automatic parachute release flap which also contains the housing for the main ripcord handle. Once this flap is closed, the parachute is then locked closed with the main ripcord handle. She's now gonna apply rigger seal to the pins of the main ripcord handle. This rigger seal is a stamp of approval to ensure that this parachute is not tampered with during transportation. She's now gonna close up all the flaps on her pack tray. Every parachute that leaves this building is signed off by the person who packed the parachute as well as the rigger who did the final inspection. The pack job is now complete.